So, we are back for more Stanley Parable. The first part was kind of... Uh, put it mildly strange. So... Huh. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Yeah, this is... And let's find out where the co-workers are. Yes. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yeah, so this is the, the question now. Try to open... Maybe some skeletons in the closet. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office Hoping he might find an answer there. Monetize free to play. Eh? Okay. As I did, monetize free to play makes you an evil person, so. <laughs> uh, I thought it deserved to be, well, to disappear. Well, first door I can open. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. Ah. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Don't think... Okay, defying the narrator is not a good thing. At this point, I'm just willing to pass everything. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss. Admitting he had left his post during work hours, he might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all. None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange, this can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So, he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Whoa. Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself? Believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too, surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control. 
that this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. Uh, I'm kind of not. How did this car get here? Stanley began screaming. Please, someone wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? <laughs> and everything went black. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy, this much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day, the very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career, and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. Okay, narrator, I get the message. <sighs> Okay, in red. This is the... Uh, in my opinion, a f game against you, but I cannot fight you. Not really. Or not directly. So... What to do? All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Let's try to Stanley decided to go uh, to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memory. Mystery. Of the missing co workers. Who in real life I give a shit about. So, continuing the motif of giving a shit. Ah, okay. You know where we have to go. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Let's make it quick. Yet, there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to uh -huh. his boss's office. Not really interactive. Negative bathroom. Hey. Okay, seriously? This boss is an asshole. I mean, look at the bathroom. What's that? What the? A gun to the head of a pander? Okay, this I must see. Business strategy. <laughs> oh, that's so evil. 
I am the most expensive boss. Okay. I guess the creators of this game will just have a problem with their... One of the former bosses. Yeah, I'm defying the narrator again, but uh, at this point... Why not? Wait, what? It's about me? Huh. Didn't know that they make those anymore. Elevators with music. Reaches Mark 1 in a couple of seconds from the shaking. Okay, uh, approaching light speed. What is going on here? Or oh, is the game just shaking? Shake, 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 okay, cannot jump, but you can jump, okay, uh, what is this, what's that? Some schematics? History of the uh, what 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 relations between Poland and Austria Hungary or Hungary. Uh, recommendations from the Oversight Committee. 1991. Okay. Okay, where is this going? I mean, I actually didn't really defy the orders, or well, basically the su suggestions of the narrator. He said, the boss's office is up. Upstairs, I mean, I'm going as far as upstairs as I can get, so... Huh. Come on. Yeah, really unprofessional for me during a Let's Play to drink. But hey, I'm the space wingman and not the professional wingman. <laughs> okay, nothing is going on here. Are we stuck? I hope not. Oh, no, 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 no. Elevator didn't go in. Ah, oh, come on. Okay, let's go up. But it doesn't move, okay? Gotta go down. Okay, I have quite a few names up. I didn't. This is a dead end, isn't it? Okay, this elevator is kind of stuck. Huh. Okay, technically I didn't defy him. 
Oh, the narrator. Oh. That's... Exit not. Business. Let's go to the bathroom. I don't have anything to lose at this point. Oh, and even board a well a mirror. And this Whoa Because the boss knows that what the boss says goes if the boss suffered losses, then that's what the boss chose. Okay. Yeah, okay, then let's take a shit. Yeah, let's go and take a shit. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. What could it mean? Stanley wondered aloud to nobody. He began wildly tearing through papers on the boss's desk, pulling books off the shelf, looking behind paintings, desperate for clues to his situation. But his attention was caught by a keypad behind the boss's desk. What could its purpose be? In fact, this keypad guarded the terrible secret that lay buried below his feet. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Okay. Stanley just sat around twiddling his thumbs. Trying okay. to input anything on the device was useless, since he could never possibly know that the combination was... Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. Huh. Checking out every possible angle. Ah, this elevator works. Okay, let's do it again. Loading, 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 loading. Low, 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 ding, 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 do. Yeah. Okay. Kind of Stanley again. walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. No, he didn't. Although this passageway had the word Escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. Uh, I prefer death before uh, corporate the mind door control slavery. Was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. Don't care! My freedom! At this point, Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward and willingly confront his death. I'm not... Okay, this is kind of scary, but I don't care! Freedom! Freedom! I mean loading! Loading! No, no, no! <laughs> As the machine whirred into motion and Stanley was inched closer and closer to his device, he reflected that his life had been of no consequence whatsoever. Stanley can't see the bigger picture. He doesn't know the real story, trapped forever in his narrow vision of what this world is. Perhaps his death was of no great loss, like plugging the eyeballs from a blind man. So he uh, okay. and willingly accepted no. this violent end to his brief and shallow life. Okay, this is it. We can't go out. We can't go away! Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator. 
as Stanley was led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body, killing him instantly. Ha! It didn't! I didn't die! <laughs> uh, as I planned, of course. No, no, the Stanley parable. Eh? And yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office as alive as ever. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? I don't know, he's a crazy guy. Okay, this is kind of... When every path you can walk has been created for you long in advance, death becomes meaningless, making life the same. Do you see now? Do you see that Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start? Oh, don't give me a lost ending. Don't give me a lost... Don't you dare! Give me a lost ending. Paintings? Okay. Office layout. Oops. Oh, wait. Where is my... Doors. Oh, okay. Okay. The office. Okay, this one. Uh, probably show doors. Oh, credits. The Stanley Parable. Credits. Written and designed by Davy Reed and William Poe. I hope I pronounced them right. So I give you a little, a couple of seconds to read all of that. And a character skin. Oh, okay. From the intro. Alright. So, made you doors by Valley. Not bad. Hmm. Need credits. Office computers. Doy database. Save some energy, I mean, in the game. Button sounds. Turn of sounds used throughout the game when buttons are pressed. Each sound is a mix of a keyboard stroke and a synthesized tone. Okay, my inner gamer says, okay, try every possible. No, I'm not playing every possible combination. Hey, why are they on again? I shut them off. Uh, what's that? Four three one four three six. Oh, the office and maintenance room. Okay, this is actually a cool after credit. I mean, point of uh, Stanley Perry HD remix is to win. Point of standard paper is HD remix to lose. Larger words, larger words. Are you going? Am I going crazy? Maybe it isn't the same image show that clock before. These are screenshots of the Stanley Parable HD remix. There isn't one. War zone, okay. Early in development was designed an ending where Stanley Parable would ever on the battlefield fighting aliens. The action game would become sentient and would wage war against the narrator. We realized shortly after starting to build it that it was far too jokey and on the nose for the tone of the game. Plus, some people interpreted it as making fun of people who like shooters, which was not our intention. Hmm. Actually, that would be cool. I mean, there are not many games that make out there that make fun of shooters. Uh, okay. Huh. From Oakster, subject question. Will the game feature co uh, capybaras? Better email. Uh, go to hell. The lounge. That's. Uh, 
Not bad. Ah, uh, just the timer. Ooh. Meeting room. One option. Two options. One option. Bench. Okay. A game and a nutshell. Kinda. The game is now paused. Um, bending levers. Hmm. So there's the exit. Yes. Free demanding. Okay. Countdown desk. Okay, I haven't explored every. I have. Okay. Give him the game a couple of uh, maybe one and a half hour. So, excuse me for not exploring every ending. But that is a nice experience. A mock up. Ah. Look kind of portal esque, but. Down desk. Okay, over there. Office clock, boss office. Several boss offices? Okay. Narration outtakes. I cannot hear. Okay, someone is talking, but I... I mean, except for me. Well then, this episode of the show will get him right back on track to where he was supposed to be in the story. Stanley stood on the roof. Okay, let's get out of here. Get to the end, if it is the end. So, where was it again? Oh, not over there. Let's get out of here. I guess the exit is the exit in this game. <laughs> oh, look at these two. How they wish to destroy one another. How they wish to control one another. How they both wish to be free. Let's put it. Can you see? Can you see how much they need one another? No, perhaps not. Sometimes these things cannot be seen. But listen to me. You can still save these two. You can stop the program before they both fail. Push escape and press quit. There's no other way to beat this game. As long as you move forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. Stop now and be your only true choice. No. Whatever you do, choose it. Don't I choose freedom instead. For you. Uh. Don't have time to... Uh. Uh, squishy freedom. Uh. But if press escape. At this point, I cannot trust anyone. So, uh, what's going on? Still black. Kinda. Hello. Hello. Should I press escape now? I'm doing it. And I'm going back. And escape. What is happening? Okay, I'm being squished, but shouldn't there be a red screen? Or 
well, representing the blood, the pain. Oh. Oh, this game is fucking with me at this point. Come on. Okay. Let's see. Let's wait. Okay. Just staring at the black screen. You want it? You can have it. Oh, I can take my smartphone. I don't need that. Oh, and my smartphone is kind of not a black screen. So it doesn't have a black screen. So, what's going on? I can control all delete myself out of this at every time. So that's it, isn't it? Huh. Okay. That's kinda not funny, but I'm dead, so being dead is kinda blackish. So, I take that as an artsy ending, and yeah, I hope you, you, dear viewer, enjoyed this so far, the blackness of this screen. Um, let's see what happens if I begin the game again. So, see you next time.